Hey, this is Omar Bolden. I'm here with Dimples Radio. Welcome. This is Dimples Radio, and I'm here with the handsome Omar Bolden. Hey, hey, hey. Am I saying your last name correctly? Absolutely. Bolden. Like yep. Golden? What's up? Yep. <laughs> I see you. Anyway, I had the pleasure of meeting Omar a few months ago at our, our friend was having a party. Yep. And he just automatically connected with me because he's just a really, really like genuine, nice person. I'm talking about you like you're not looking at my face. Um, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> he's just a really, really, really nice, genuine person and has such an aura of positivity that you could be in a room and not know him, but you're like, I got to be a friend before we like leave. And then you watch him on Snapchat and you're like, okay, <laughs> I'm lazy today. I got to go to the gym. <laughs> So it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me and thank you for those kind words. That was dope. Of course, of course. So for those who aren't familiar with you, do you mind introducing yourself and what you do? Uh, Yeah, my name is Omar Bolden. Um, I just recently just retired from the NFL. Yeah. What? Retirement? Not really by choice. Just my body just telling me it's time. You know, so I recently retired. Currently a influencer. Oh, and fitness guru, workout junkie, positive vibe maker. Okay. I'm with the vibes, <laughs> um, though. Yeah, everything everything that has to do with just being a better person. That's what I've been up to. No, but that's real. You know, like, listening to your body and choosing to retire, how important do you think that is for, like, people? Because I, I think on our end, just on the marketing side or on the digital side or on the consumer side— we hear so often people like waiting until something bad happens and then being like, oh, you yeah, know, I'm retired now. But like, how important was it for you, like in making that decision, like to keep your body intact? Because you're in great shape. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my body made the decision for me, though. Okay. You know, so it's almost like I was in the same situation. You know, I mean, I, I got hurt. Or I, I didn't mention this, but I'm, I'm fortunate enough to play on be part of the Super Bowl winning team, the Broncos team. Okay. Um, in 2016, and I ended up hurting my knee that season going to the Super Bowl, and I just never recovered the right way, you know, or not even the right way. My knee just never came back to what it originally was mm -hmm. for whatever reasons. And the result of that, I've had to just step away because I, I can't continue to. The game is not that serious to me, you know. I, I understand. I understand and see the big picture of life, you know, and I want to be able to play with my kids when I'm 55. I still want to be able to do the things I'm doing. Now, maybe not at the same level, but I still want to be able to do all the same things and I know that I can, you That's know, true. and I, I don't want to continue to put myself in a situation to where, you know, I suffer, suffer long-term problems due to a sport. That's real. No, like I get it. Like you're talking to somebody who has a, uh had three knee surgeries right, on my left right, knee. Right, right, like, right. <laughs> look, the third knee surgery, I was like, you know what? Might want to let the basketball go. Yeah, it's weak. <laughs> knee surgeries are the worst. Because you keep using them, and then it's one of those things where it's like, you do have the long thoughts. Like, I know for me, because it was like ACL, MCL, and then it was like, they sutured one of my meniscus and they took the other one out. So then it became the conversation of, if you keep running or using your knee as hard as you are without building like the musculature around it, you're going to have arthritis when you're 30. Mm-hmm. Which is like stupid, like a stupid thought process to have, but it's something you have to like, I can't go run a half marathon, but I can hit this Zumba class. Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and you have to have that absolutely. balance in that. So one thing that drew me to you the first night we met was that you're just a really positive person. So how did you develop the attitude towards like life? It's always been in me. You know, it's always been a part of me. My dad is a real positive person. He's... We're not the same, okay. But he's he all, he's always seeing the good in, in all situations, and so I guess that's kind of where it, it originated from. Was at, at home, you know, with my with my pops, and I had a situation at Arizona State where Sun um, Devils. Hey. That's right, that's right. Shout out to the Sun Devils. They <laughs> playing right. tonight too. All right, look. Um, <laughs> um, but I had a situation there where I tore my ACL um, after I decided to return to school I had the opportunity to to forego my senior season mm -hmm. and I decided to come back to school and I ended up tearing my ACL and I was just in a really bad mental state of mind you know okay. just I was just devastated you know I was just like man I just passed up like this opportunity to accomplish my dreams you know what I'm saying help put my, my family in a better position and like now it could possibly like not even happen you right. know so I actually had a friend uh, or a girl that I was dating at the time that was going through this process with me. And, well, actually, I, I, I'm kind of skipping over a part, but uh -oh. my friends and I heard this song, Jade Kiss was spitting on this song with, with Fabulous, right? And he okay. was like, yo, negative energy will stick to you like a thumbtack. And I was like, damn, 
that shit is real, right? Yeah. Sorry, can I cuss on here? Yeah, you can. Word. Go ahead. Word, word, Go word. ahead. Come on, baby. Look, word, this, word. this sound like radio. So, What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was like, damn, that shit is true. You know, like, and yeah. that, that really resonated with me at the time. So I don't know how one way or another, but uh, this was right around the time that Twitter started to boom. Right, mm-hmm. it started getting more popular. Like Diddy was like the only person on, on Twitter at this time. Dude, that's like 08, 09. Yes, it, yes. yes. Okay. Diddy was like the only person on, on on there at the time. Well, I guess this was 2010. Because yeah, no, so we graduated from the same school the same year, and we yeah. didn't know each other. Just Crazy. putting out. Right. Um, so yeah, I know when you're talking about. Go right, <laughs> right. So I just started um, using positive living as a hashtag. I, I mean, that was the only thing I knew about hashtag. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. So hashtag positive living. Hashtag positive living. And it just started to gain like traction, more and more traction as Twitter started to grow and amongst our football team, you know, the football program, because they knew what I was going through, you know, I was a captain of the team. So everybody was like, which was really dope. You know, we had a, a, such a family um, oriented team that, you know, they cared, you know, and they kept pushing that for me because they felt it, you know. Yeah. And the girl that I was dating at the time ended up running into um, uh, someone who worked for the manufacturer company that produced the Livestrong bracelets. Okay. So... She was like, yo, I, I got a dope idea and I got to give her a credit, you know, because she came, she, I, mean, I already had the word, you know, and the, and the mindset and the lifestyle that I wanted to live, but she came with the idea on the bands and we, we started producing the bands, you know, I got it trademarked and that was that. And I just kind of, that's where, so that's where like, it really made a, a huge jump from like my childhood to like me becoming a, a real adult, you know? And I was sure. like, yo, damn, you know what, like, things gonna come at you in life and sometimes you ain't gonna have no control over it, you know, but like, one thing you do have control over is your mindset and the way you attack these situations and you attack every day. And like, that was my mindset. I was like, damn, like, shit, I got nine months from today until the combine. That's real. And I just tore my ACL and like, like giving up is not an option. That's like, real. Like, going to the league, not going to the league is not an option for me. Nah, like, I've known since I was nine I was going to be a pro athlete, and I've known since the age of 13 that I was going to be in the NFL. Like, point blank, period. So, like, it was like, okay, well, shit, we got to do this. Right. We gotta do. And it's crazy because at the time, my old roommate in college tore his ACL two days before me, same leg. I mean, we still boys, right? Yeah, 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 but we yeah. were really tight at this time, you know? I mean, we're going through the process, the recovery process together. Yeah. Say, we're seniors, the same our situa- situation is all of that. identical. Right. And it was just a... um. You know, it's kind of interesting to see how my mindset helped carry me, you know, further than him because, and not to say that he's a weak person, you know, or not to say that he didn't want it because he did, but he didn't wake up with that same mental, you know, uh, mindset every day, you know, and that's what I did. And I just, I just realized that, you know, it's going to be hard, but as long as I keep a positive attitude, be a good person and work hard, like, I don't see how, like, how I could lose. No, but that's, you know what? The mindset, the mental aspect of recovery is like a huge thing. And like, it was one of those things that I didn't find out until after my last surgery. Because my last surgery was like the, the longest one. And they're like, okay, yeah, you can be doing physical therapy for like nine months. I wasn't allowed to walk for like a month simply because of the meniscal repair. But then they were like, yeah, then we're going to go ahead and do everything. And you're going to go through PT. And in nine months, you're going to be able to run again. And in nine months, although I had the muscular capacity to do so, I was psych myself out. Like mm. something about like, especially like, you know, agility training when you have to change those quick directions. Man, you, you want me to do what? You want me to pivot on this leg they just fixed? It was just all up in my head. You're absolutely right. And you weren't trusting yourself. You never weren't trusting your own body. Exactly. You know? And like, that's like the hardest part I want to say of like, after we do like surgery or recover or we injure or whatever the case may be, that's like the biggest thing we have to overcome. And they don't tell as a ex high school athlete, as an ex pro athlete, that's not something that they tell you offhand. Like, yo, you're meant, you got to be mentally tough to bounce back from this quick. Right. So I'm like, I feel like that's just something they got to talk about like more. That's interesting. They should do that. They should. I never thought about that. They don't. They don't. And they should. They should. Like, that's the thing. Like, okay, we going to do this. Trust the process, but you got to wake up tough every day. Yeah. But they try to prepare you to be mentally tough for, you know, your opponents. And, yeah. That's, but I guess that's a whole nother battle within itself, you know, completely is, different is, is recovering from injury because they're going to happen. It's, it's inevitable. You yeah. know, it's death, you know, hands down, like somebody getting hurt. Somebody getting hurt. Somebody ankle getting sprained. Somebody jamming a finger. Somebody pulling a hamstring. Right. Somebody a groin, spraining an ankle. Right. Something torn, yeah, yeah, something absolutely. whatever. Like that's absolutely. just part of this. When you impact your body that hard, that's something that happens. But I think that psychology of it, they don't tell us. I bring all of this up 
because I know you've been seeing what's been going on with Hurricane Harvey right now in Texas. Yeah. But there's this one particular video that stuck out to me, and it was this man and his son, and they're in the rain and they're just walking. Walking. I saw that. And they're like, the news reporter's like, sir, where are you going? And he's like, I don't know. And then she's like, so you're just walking? And he's like, yeah, God is good. Like, God is good. Like, him and his son were so grateful. And it blew my mind because it's like they just lost everything. But not like material wise. I was about to say, yeah, well, what's material what you wise? Everything. <laughs> they, just, <laughs> they just lost their materials, which to like, to some people, they would be so devastated because it's like, how do you rebuild? But like in that opportunity, he was just very grateful. And I felt like this is just an example of a mentally tough human being. Yeah, and that's the, that's the positive living uh, lifestyle right there that I like, I like to live by and try to live by or do live by every day. You know, like, yo, this could be, this could be a lot worse. Could have lost my son. Mm-hmm. We both could have died. You know, at least at this chance, we got a second chance at life. Whenever, whenever we do fix this, you know, whenever the city does come back together, man, we got another chance. But like for him to be worrying about whatever they lost, man, I mean, it's hundreds of people who just lost things. Like, yeah, you're not the only one. You know, the the most important thing is that you're okay. You know, but in saying that, it's tragic what's going on down there. It's, tra- it's tragic. It's tragic and. This, this may be kind of weird to say, but it's almost like we needed this as a, as a country, you mm-hmm. know? Like, sometimes if you believe in God or a higher power, sometimes, like, God try to tell us things and we don't hear him. And sometimes he has to make, you know, bolder statements mm-hmm. in order for us to hear. And there's too much hate going on in the world, and sometimes it takes situations like this to bring, to, bring people together. Yeah, to get rid of the hate and invite more love in and bring people together. Because right now, it's crazy what's going on, but it's really admirable what we're seeing from the people in the community of Houston because you're seeing people from all different colors, from um, all different ethnicities and, you know, different backgrounds coming together and helping one another just to, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I just read a story today about a black guy who was trying to help a family who had a Confederate flag, Mm -hmm. you know? And to him, you know, obviously, you know, we don't care about no flag, like, Mm -hmm. That, it don't bother us. It right. don't bother us, man. We're just trying to help people and make people, you know, get to safety. But I think with us in mm-hmm. general, speaking from our, our culture, like, we don't want no problems at all. Right. We don't want, we just want, we just want to help. Maybe not, maybe we don't want to help. Help, but, but we just want that equality. Yeah, we just want equality, man. We just want peace and we just want to be equal playing field for us all, you right. know. And hopefully, you know, we don't lose too many lives. In the process. In the of process of this, but. I know this is going to make us better. It's going to make us stronger. You know, God willing, this makes us better. Because I think, like, the biggest thing that I see, because I, I, I agree with you. Part of me, like, I, like, wholeheartedly agree with you that sometimes disasters happen in order to bring us together. But then on the other hand, history has a tendency to repeat itself. So, like, there have been worse, like, more jarring disasters that have occurred that people have banded behind. But as soon as the shock value goes away, people forget. It's true. You know what I mean? Um, like, look at what happened in Katrina. Yeah. Look at what happened in Haiti. Yep. Look at what happened in Hurricane Sandy. Like, this isn't the first time that I've seen people, oh, my God, people are losing all their positions. Let's come together. Let's help them rebuild. Let's figure something out for these people. And we grow together as a community, and it's great. And we all love each other for a month. And then niggas start to forget. Yeah. And that's that's unfortunate. But... Again, I think that God gonna continue to send reminders yeah. until he gets until he gets until he says, you know what? Like, just get it together. <laughs> yeah. Because here's my whole thing. Here's my whole fear of that is because I don't want it to have to take a tragedy in order for us to get together. Because on the other end, like, yeah, natural disasters are definitely a tragedy. But then you look at man-made disasters, like what happened with Mike Brown, what Mm. happened with Alton Sterling, Mm. what happened with Freddie Gray, Sandra Bland, all the Mm. countless names we can name. Those are disasters themselves. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, like, you see our community, especially within the black community, for so long, black community had, like, their own issues, but we're coming together like, yo, we got to figure this out. Yeah. But I'm like, it shouldn't take that. Nah, but we're not gonna win that one either, though. Like, that's, that, the, that's not. That's not like they're not gonna come together for us on that. No, they're it's not. Gonna, it's gonna take worldly. It's gonna. It's gonna. It's one of those things. What did I see? The meme I saw. You know how people are all this weekend are like, "Yo, pray for Houston." Mm-hmm. Somebody goes, "Now, what if I said all cities matter?" 
how dumb does, right. that, does that sound in comparison? Absolutely. It sounds ridiculous. Exactly. You know? Yeah. All, all cities matter, guys. Cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I like also like, not going through this. Right, but Houston needs so, us like, right now. So what's up? All lives do matter, but like black people need you. Yeah. So what's up? Yeah. You know, and and that's the thing that I feel like. So I definitely agree with you. Tragedies do bring us together. I just hope one day soon. Me too. Within our immediate future, we won't come together over a tragedy. We'll come together over a blessing. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, hey, guys, the hole in the ozone layer got smaller. No more climate change. Yeah. Straight up. Straight up. You know what I mean? Like, something like turn up over that. But like just something positive versus us always coming together because something happened. Like even with this Harvey thing, what is it? The death total is over and 18 people and 200 people are lost. That's crazy. You know, but but you know there are always good things out of the the hurricane. I, what did I see? A, ch- a Chick Fil A worker took a jet ski to go rescue an old woman. Did he? Yes. <laughs> I have to show you the video. That's lit. They were like Chick Fil A customer service is unparalleled. <laughs> I, I felt like I saw I man I saw a picture on old maybe, lady. Was she? Nah, I saw an old lady like coming down the stairs, and this dude was like in her house in a jet, a jet ski. ski. That's that's okay, the, okay, that's okay. the lady. That's okay. the lady. Literally, it was yeah, a lady yeah. and her husband, and <laughs> uh, they had they had tried to get somebody to come help them. The Chick Fil A came to come rescue them on a jet ski. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And it was like a black kid on a jet ski rescuing an old white yeah, woman, and tight. she's like, "Okay, come on, let's go, come on, <laughs> let's get back to safety." I'm, I'm look, I'm with it, I'm with it, I'm with it. Um, okay, but just in talking about tragedies, Black Lives Matters, you know, I have to ask you about this um, simply because you did come from the NFL. So maybe you have an insight into the dichotomy a little bit that you could share. Um, how do you feel or what's your take on Colin Kaepernick's um, protest? I love it. I respect it. That's real. Um, you know, a man that believes in something and he's standing firm, you know. I'm behind it, so um, I support him, um, and I, I know there are many uh, other players, ex-players, that do support him as well. Um, I think it's unfortunate that he's having so much backlash, and that he's actually being—he's uh, not given the fair opportunity to to have a job in the NFL again because of his uh, political stance. I think right. that's sad. I think that's sad because, uh, as far as talent goes, if you take what he's doing politically out the window, like he deserves, he's more than deserving of having a job in the NFL, right. if not being a starting quarterback in the NFL. So, um, I I hate to see what's going on with on from the NFL side of things, mm-hmm. but as far as what he's doing for the community, for the culture, like come on, keep it going, right. keep it going because it makes, like you never know, like you never know in life like why things happen to you, right. you know. And who knows? Like maybe like this was his call, and maybe God, this is why he was sent here on earth to do this, to lead, you know, and to be the active. position, given the I, position. I, absolutely. So everybody's story ain't written down like written down to go down in the NFL as Super Bowl MVP, it's true. you know, and be a superstar. And like that's not everybody's story, you know. Some people are are, are sent there to gain a platform to go do something else in life, you know. No. And and like it's as of right now to me. To me, as a guy who likes to look at the bigger picture, like seems like this may be his purpose. And I'm not saying that he won't get another job in the NFL again because I think he will. Yeah. But I think at the end result, like he bigger than football. Then that's and that was the thing that I saw. Someone was like, his purpose is bigger than football. It's way bigger than football. And you know what? It it kind of to me it mirrors Ali. Absolutely. Ali Absolutely. got his titles revoked. Yep. You know what I mean? Like for saying things that we say now on Twitter just for kicks. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, Black Lives Matter, man. All these days, what? Yeah, like, times have changed, yeah. But I definitely give it to Kaepernick. I appreciate him using his platform. Me too. Um, but then I also recognize not everybody can use their platform in that way. No, no. It's, you know what I mean? To be honest, to be honest, this is why I say, like, you just never know because, like, a player at my position can't, we won't have that. Yeah. He, you know why he had why like because he's QB. He, he's a quarterback. Yeah, he's on a pedestal. You know, yeah. like the quarterbacks are. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter how many other players play well on the team. Like QB's when the players lose, I mean when the team loses or when the team wins, they interview the quarterback and the head coach. 
You're right. It's a whole team out there, but it's a quarterback and a head coach because they lead the team. Exactly. They lead the team, you know, so um so that's a blessing, you know, that that he he does he does play that position, you know, because anybody else it would be very I think it would be extremely hard, you know, to voice his opinion like that. 100%. Yeah. I completely agree with you. I didn't even like put that together that yeah, cuz cuz he's a QB, he's able to do that. But that's like that's the bless that's the blessing. You know what I mean? Like Ali was able to to go and be like, "Yo, this is this is wrong. This is blah blah blah," and be so political because he was the greatest. Yeah. Can you imagine if Ali lost? Right. No one would care. Nope. He'd be like, "Oh man, you just a loser. Chill out in the corner." Yeah. You know, like so. That's that's definitely the, you know, the access that comes with the position. But you know, sure. Um, really, really quick too. Like talking about the position stuff. Like three years ago, Colin Kaepernick was just as huge. And and well known as Odell Beckham, three years ago this was this was Colin Kaepernick. Okay, took the 49ers to the NFC Championship game twice, back back to back, went mm-hmm. to the Super Bowl. You know, superstar, mega star overnight, and now he can't have a. Can't. That's so wild. Like, could you imagine in three years Odell Beckham not being able to get a, play in the league? No, I can't imagine that. You don't even have to watch football to know you. Mm-hmm. Be like that's insane. That's that's you know what? Because the way I see it, it's like. Not to compare him to Kobe, but I'm gonna compare him to Kobe because I'm a basketball person. It'd be like you telling me 2001 Kobe couldn't get a job after the Lakers just had a three peat. Yeah, it's crazy. Although Collins' cap, Collins' performance, his his last season performance <laughs> wasn't was, wasn't the best. Wasn't the best. Wasn't the best. No, no, no. But that still, I do know. But still, though, like not to completely write him off. Right. You know that's I, yeah. No, because what was it? Um, I think towards the end of free towards the end of free agency, I was looking at stats. Because first of all, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm not a football person. I love football, but I'm like, I only know like the bare minimum. Yeah, I know the is. positions. I understand how the point system works. I could tell you something's like, you know, oh, he offsides, you know, like, yeah, yeah, cool. But that's like the basics, right? Um, but I was like really, really digging in stats because I'm like, because on one hand, you have this conversation where people are like, yeah, Colin Kaepernick is one of the best QBs in the league. And on the other hand, you're like, people are like, do you see his stats from yeah, last season? That's a lie. Right. <laughs> so I'm like looking at the stats. I'm like, yeah, I see it. But then they started picking up free agents that were way worse. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, oh, okay. So like at this point, we can't say it's not about race no more. Like, no, for sure. We can't. You okay? Cool, for homeboy sure. over here. You were right about the stats for a minute, but y'all at the bottom of the barrel right now with these boys. Do you think if a white quarterback took that type of political stance or knee he would be without like Listen. unemployed right now no he would not be he would be employed <laughs> Why quarterback? but that's you know what the thing that wows me out like the most about this entire stance because white white players are starting to like i'm with you in solidarity i may not need but i'll stand and place my hand on your shoulder right they're starting to join and be part of the movement but the thing that kills me because as an athlete, you know that you know the, the color dynamics of our teams, mm-hmm. predominantly black. Mm-hmm. Any team you're on, I am your brother, I am your sister. We play basketball, there's 12 of us, right? Mm-hmm. Five of us to play at any given time. We have seven people that rotate. Maybe, depending on the team that you're on, you have five or six. Cool. Um, with that said, we're family. We die and train at practice together. If somebody is killing me, they are killing your arm. Absolutely. If, so, like, if people are, if the police are killing me and I'm your family, I'm your sister, I'm your brother, and you see me kneeling because it's that important to me, but you look the other way, right? we not family no nah. more, dog. Well, all, all you have to do is take a knee. Just, all you got to do is take a knee. I'm not, and it's not even like, because you know what someone did point out to, and this is the thing that I want to make sure we state or iterate, is that at first, the very first time Colin protested, he sat. And someone said, you sitting is disrespectful, kneel. Mm. So the second time he did it, he kneeled. Because he's like, at the end of the day, I don't want to disrespect people who are overseas fighting and dying nah. for our flag. But at the same time, I need to make a statement. Yeah. So now my thing with that is, if like a Tom Brady had kneeled, if a Peyton Manning had kneeled. But let me tell you, those guys could change the world. Thank you. Those but, guys, those and guys, they just that, don't. That could change the world. Could absolutely change the world. Well, and they just don't. Well, you know why? Because as much as they would love to help, or maybe they don't want to help. Who knows? But it's not their problem. You know. That's, so they're like, 
It's not their problem. There's got to be some kind of privilege to look at some fucked up shit and be like, oh, it's another Tuesday. It's not my problem today. My house is still standing. It doesn't matter. People in Houston can't sleep nowhere. I mean, like, I mean, well, <laughs> listen, okay. Like, how many homeless people do, do you pass by a day? Like, or how many do you see? I we, see a lot. Right. And I, maybe, like, at first, you probably were like, damn. This is tough. Or maybe every once in a while you, you give some dollars, but like, let's be real, like 85% of the time, you're not even, you. I'm not stopping all the nah, time. No, you, you're right. You walk right, right past people. You don't even, think, you, you, you do it so much and you, it's so, so routine for you that you don't even give it any thought. 100%. But you know what? So it's, you know why? Because it's not your problem. At the same time, I'm also the person who will keep trail mix and water in my car for that very reason. Right. So if I do see somebody and I, I remember, right. So I'm gonna Yo, touch you. Man. I'm gonna touch you while you kneeling. Man. I'm gonna touch you while you kneeling. I'm gonna give you. A, I'm, I'm gonna touch your shoulder while you kneeling. You know what I'm saying? But like that's that's not my problem though. You know, like yes. they they're not killing my people. Yeah. They, you know they, what, things are going. Business is booming for us. Oh man. You know what? You know what kills me? Cause I see that and I completely agree with you. I understand that stance. Um, I see that and then I had recently just watched this Vice interview, right? And it's like. On, on this end, it's a white supremacist sitting down with two Asian men to do dinner. And I'm going to send you this video because I really want you to watch like the full thing. But basically, dude is like, no disrespect, but why, you know, you seem like a pretty reasonable guy. Why did you vote for Trump? Like, because you seem like a pretty factual person. And it doesn't take a lot to like poke some holes in what he's saying. Like, why did you vote for him? And he was like, it has nothing to actually do with what he's saying. It's the fact that he slows down the white dispossession of America, and that's what people are afraid of. Mm. He's like, as a white mm. American, as a Caucasian American, he's like, I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm not scared of black people. I'm not scared of Asian people. You know, I'm really not scared of you guys. I just don't want you guys taking over. I don't want to become the minority. Mm. So when I see, like, our mm. white counterparts not kneeling, I genuinely don't think white people are walk around af afraid of black people. Nah, I don't right? think so either. But I do think it is that white dispossession issue. Like, we're, we're slowly taking away this America that you remember in your head, and you feel a certain way about it. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I can see that. Um, but I actually, I, I think I feel like I lied, because I feel like white people do walk around scared. Scared? Yeah. Not, and not, I mean, I'm not saying all, uh, but I'm, I'm speaking from like... Uh, a personal experience. Yes, because yeah. I, I feel like when I walk by white people sometimes, like, especially if I'm like... I don't think they, for me, because my experience is, I don't think they walk around scared. I think they walk around with preconceived notions. So it's like before I yes. open my mouth, it's like, oh, she about to be real aggressive and she dark skinned. Oh, she must be mean. Like, right. they have these preconceived notions. I don't think they're actually afraid for their life. I mean, you know. Like, like let George Zimmerman tell it. He was. Don't believe you. I don't think. But listen, though. No, you don't walk around. Let me tell you what it look, what it look like from from my angle. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm constantly, you know, in the gym or leaving. I'm always in workout gear, mm -hmm. you know. And so, so sometimes you, I got. You I, got a hoodie on. Sometimes I got a hoodie on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm sleeveless. Mm -hmm. You know, and you got Sometimes, tattoos because yeah. they can't tell us radio. Yeah, yeah, I got tattoos. On, okay. Yeah, you know, and I'm a, I'm a fit. I mean, I'm, I'm in shape. Okay, I'm in shape. Sometimes I decide to wear my hair down, like, and th these are the moments where I notice it the most when my hair is down, and my and I'm sleeveless. I've literally watched people walk out of my way. Whoa. Let's, I'm talking about and completely avoid me and oh. like, literally, I could sense like timidness you know as they're walking by it is the weirdest shit i've ever seen but if i put my hair up it becomes a completely different thing so i notice when i don't want to be bothered i just put my hair down but yeah. in saying that like i i, I do feel like so, sometimes they're scared, they, they're scared for life. I, and maybe it's just because they have preconceived notions yeah. about us you know what i'm saying and that's unfortunate too because they're negative they're definitely negative. It'll be great. It'll be great. They were positive. But you know what the you know what the funniest thing is? Um, I got a friend because you know we're going to talk about using the digital space. I got a friend who uses digital space, and what he's doing, he's changing the preconceived notions that us minorities, black people, have of white people. What he does actually on his Snapchat is he'll snap a white person, and he'll write, "This person looks suspicious." So like now, uh, <laughs> so, that's good. Like so now, I'm like, you know, they, they standing a little too close to the whip. 
they look a little suspicious. Right. And it's it's literally like a rhetoric, like, this is how y'all feel about us. Yeah. But from my vantage, you a white man that's a little too... You a little too close Come to my on, car bro. right now, babe. You, what you doing right there? Right, right. You know, there's a whole bunch of sidewalk over there. Why, Why you? Why you next to mine? Thank yeah. you. You look suspicious. That's good. I'm going to have to check, um, yeah. get his handle. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. That's, that's, that's the wave right now. Yeah. Okay, but just in talking about the internet, um, and you know, you touched on your moving into the influencer field, right? Yeah, yeah. How important is it for you to like create your content, maintain your digital profile, What's the week looking like? Oh, man. I think, for one, I think it's absolutely imperative to keep a strong social media presence going right now. And, like, if anybody in our generation who's not thinking that way is fooling themselves or kidding themselves. Like, everything we do and a lot of not everything we do is mm-hmm. with our phones. And 90% of the time we're on our phones, whether we're working, doing emails, texting, whether we're researching whether we're updating software for our new app, whatever you're doing, you know what I'm saying? You're doing it off, right off out of the palm of your hand, you know? So for me not to want to capitalize and take advantage of the platform that I already have and continue to grow my presence, I think I will be a fool because mm-hmm. I want to continue to, to grow my brand and begin to start to uh, venture off into the entrepreneurial state, you know, and, and live in that lane. And I think it's important for me to, to continue and up, upkeep that presence I have on social media just because you of the Facebook power. It? It's funny you asked me that. I just posted a, a workout video on my Facebook before I came up here. Okay. And I did that because I know that Facebook is the strongest network. Facebook you know? is where you gotta go. It's, it's where you gotta go, but I ha- I've been so far like removed from Facebook that like I feel like I have to like relearn how to use it not that and i'm i'm, I'm tech savvy you know yeah, but yeah. it's just it's just really new there's a lot of new features and i haven't operated off a cell phone in a long time i'm all but if i did use it you know it was all my laptop so um but i did post a video today because i do want to get i do want to tap back into um that community because it's large and um the potential is um is amazing the potential on facebook is crazy um this week alone and i've been saying this because i'm a digital person so i'll be making predictions like years in advance right so two years ago i tweeted and this is when like a little bit after snapchat had launched i go look if you are a marketer you want to make sure you are developing content for snapchat so to fit the snapchat format and you want to make sure you begin, if you build that audience on Snap, you begin migrating them over to your Facebook because Facebook is going to launch content and you're going to be behind and you're not going to know what to do. I said that two years ago. A year later, I go, I hope you've been migrating your audience to Facebook because by this time next year, they're going to launch original content because everybody was going original content. Mm-hmm. Only person who hadn't tapped into it was Facebook. And I'm like, I know it's coming. They're smart. I know it's yep. coming. Guess what they did this week? Yep. Launched original content. They put, what, $3 million towards an agency to go develop content. They're now allowing their top influencers on their platforms to make money off of Facebook. Mm-hmm. And they have the largest user base. They mm-hmm. still take Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, multiply them by three, and you're still not touching how many people use Facebook. Yep. It's stupid. Yep. So, yeah. So, welcome back to the Facebook yeah, world. Yeah, I'm, I'm back in. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me back. <laughs> feels, good. It feels good to be back home. Feels good to be back home. Feels good to be back you home. You got to go uh, do those. I'm back uh, on the book. You got to go catch up with everybody from ASU. Man. You know, do that that jazz. Yo, you know what's crazy is I don't know... Uh, maybe this this comes from me playing football at Arizona State and Arizona State being such a, a large campus. Um, but I can't even have any more friends on Facebook. Oh, why? I, it says I'm at capacity. Oh, no, it's because you know so many people. That means you got 5,000. You got to create a Facebook page. See, okay, so... See, see, bro, see, you're going to school me. You're going to school me. You're going to school me. You're going to be right. I was like, we got to talk because it means you hit like the 5,000 capacity. You two popping. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, see, you gotta I, get me right. I did the whole thing where it was like, because uh, I was just, because people started adding me. Like when I started working with clients, they started adding me, and I just let them follow. I didn't add them back because I'm like, this, the actual adding me is for people I went to college with. Right. So, like, when we do our reunion, I actually can look you up to pretend like I know who you are. Right. You know, like, so, yeah. You know. That's all right. we'll, yeah. we'll talk. Yeah, no doubt. All right, all right. But so before you head out, I want to know what are you listening to right now? Who's on your Spotify? Your titles, man. <laughs> what do you use, Title or Spotify? 
Uh, I use title. Okay. I use title. I see you with the black on. What's up? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? Standing yeah. behind our own. Got a support on. You got? Did you order some big baller shoes too? Nah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I, I respect it though. I do respect. I respect. It. I respect it, but I don't like it. You don't. What do you mean? I don't like that they charging that much three ninety five for some sneakers. I like, do. I feel like the price point is ridiculous. That's crazy to me. But I respect it though. But that's not how I would do business personally. You I, know. I do agree. The price point is outrageous. Yeah. But I. I will applaud them for starting their own thing because yeah, you look, me too. Yeah, absolutely. Look, look at that. Now um, he has his own Facebook show. His own yeah. Facebook TV oh, show oh, just announced this week. Oh, LeVar's a star. LeVar is. Oh, he's he's a beast. And you know what's so great about him being on Facebook? Nobody can tell him nothing. Yeah. That's, you know. Uh, and that's great. It's like, it's awesome. You know what's awesome? Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't feel like people give him enough credit for being like a great father because regardless of like how loud he is or whatever he decides to do or whatever he kind of like microscope he places his sons under mm-hmm. these dudes never fold under pressure or right. they haven't folded under pressure yet like mm-hmm. these dudes like these kids are unshakable at it's, least that's what I'm seeing you, like no. I, I'm watching like all of them come out and like answer the bell it doesn't like whatever my, my pop that's my pops he, yeah. he do it but like we handle no business you know and that's what I see from that and that's why I respect them you know, you know you know what I actually like really appreciate about LeVar I feel like he's helping non-black people redefine their idea of black fatherhood Mm. because up until now, Mm. unless you were like Bill Huxtable from the Cosby's Mm -hmm. or absentee, they didn't know that a median black father existed. Mm -hmm. So now here you have this black father who's super involved in his kid's life. Mm -hmm. He's making sure that they're astute students. He's making sure they're at practice. Not only is he an not only is he ensuring that they perform well at practice and at games, but he's making sure that his team, their teammates yep. perform at the same standard. I feel like that's normal for me. You know what I mean? Played sports. My uncles, my dad, my mom, super involved, took me to every practice, made sure I ran my drills, made sure I threw my discuses, whatever. Right. But to like white people, they've never seen that. Right. What do you mean? You mean your dad stay around? Yes. Like, yes, we have fathers. Right. <laughs> we have fathers that are involved in our lives. And I feel like with him being so loud and black, it is the most important thing he can be doing right now. Yeah, I love it. Just being present. I love it. I, I love it. man. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of what they're doing. Yeah. All of the, the entire family is it's, it's dope. I know they're going to make a lot of money. They they're going to make a lot of money. They're going to have a lot of fun. You know, it's you so- know, and. <laughs> They putting the whole family on. Like, how, how could you be? How could you hate on that? How could you not that? You really can't. And what I see for them when it comes to like their brand, the Big Baller brand, I see them kind of doing what Jordan did with Nike, but with Adidas. So you see how Jordan brand is independent, but they just use Nike for manufacturing. You feel like Big Baller brand is going to use like an Adidas ad- for like manufacturing? Why Adidas? Because. Why go? It's, it's the same reason why I feel like Curry didn't sign a Nike shoe deal. Why go where we already exist? But why go to Adidas though? Because Adidas wants to be part of the culture. In the last Adidas three, are already, already a part of the culture. They want the stronghold that Nike has. Why not Puma though? Like why not? I don't feel like Puma will make that offer because they haven't seen the returns. They might. They might. Puma is a possibility. Reebok is a possibility. Like they might. But if you're looking at strong contenders, it's the very reason over the course of the last three years how Adidas has made that shift to embedding themselves in entertainment because they realize the emotional connection we as like the culture Culture. entertainment have with like Air Force Ones. We will keep that shoe in stock forever. Right. You know what I mean? And it's very, aside from the classic Adidas that we saw like Run DMC wearing, they didn't really have a cultural tie with us. Mm -hmm. They want that tie. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and there's no greater or better way to do it than to embed yourself in the culture. So whether it be partnering with the designers or, you know, having, they just got out of their deal with Big Sean, Big Sean's moving to Puma, but even initiating that deal that they had with Big Sean, they had never done that. Not in black entertainment. Nah. True. You know what I mean? So I see them. So like you look at a brand, you look like a burgeoning brand, like the big baller brand. And you're like, there's something about these guys that is this different. 
but I can't afford to lose them to Nike. They're going to make them an offer, not to acquire them, but to be partners. I like that. And I actually love that because that allows them to work with the brand. Exactly. And I feel like the days of wanting to work for a brand over. are over. Because nobody knows who you are. I mean, granted, if we're talking about these two, yeah, you know who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But generally speaking, no one knows who like people are that work for the company. Yeah. But you always know who the people are who work with the company. 100%. You know, you're completely respected in a, in a different way. You know, you're looked at in a, in a different light, you know. And I love that could possibly be like that half could be of what could be a thing with, yeah. with uh, Big Baller brand and Dickens. You know, that, that'd be dope. Let's mark it down. If if and when it happens, God willing, we'll, we'll revisit each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. We'll talk about it. Remember, I told you first, y'all put that on camera. Put that on camera. Right, put that on camera. Put that on put wax. It on. Put, it put it on. Put it on wax. Okay, so before we go, what are you listening to? What are you, What's on your title? Oh, uh, man. What gets you hype? I love this uh, Chris Brown Pills and Automobiles song right now. Okay. Uh, I like this new Miguel. Miguel Miguel's is, pop. New Miguel and Travis Scott. I'm loving, I love this Travis Scott record, Butterfly Effect. Um... At Gucci and uh and Chris Brown, so Chris Brown can't miss to me. Oh, uh, musically, music. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we talk about. Specifically, music. Specifically, music. <laughs> Specifically, music. Uh, what else I got in there? That's off the top. Uh, Have you listened to any of these new kids like the Little Pumps and the Triple X Stunts? Who? <laughs> I, I know who Little X is, but who? I mean, true. I know Triple X, but who you said Little Little Pump? Little pump, nah, I don't know. That's an actual rapper. I'm not like no, no, I, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, and I don't mean no disrespect when I'm saying who. I'm just saying no, no, no. Cause like, what's his hip? What's his hip? Somebody hip. told me and I, I didn't know, so I was asking if you knew. Cause uh, I was trying to see if you was hip and I just was old. Ah, uh, nah, I mean, I guess I, we just I, don't yeah. know. I, but I heard Triple X though. I heard Triple X. I can't listen to him though. Why? A moral reason. What, what's he beat his girlfriend and as a woman and she was pregnant oh, and I how just you know that because like he talks about it in his music oh so you've listened to his music no I've seen the lyrics oh damn that's crazy I can't I can't I can't boy, wow. I can't uh, you know what I mean like I can't yeah that boy wow can't support that yeah I, I like the little the new Lil Uzi though Lil Uzi's dope I like the new Lil Uzi I like uh, Lil the, Uzi the, yeah um, the little album that came out last week that's kind of hot I like that I like the cut uh, the record on there with him and Pharrell um, Pharrell can't it's miss. It's called Neon Guts. Yeah, yeah, Pharrell that's, can't that's miss. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Pharrell, uh, Pharrell is dope. Pharrell okay. is dope. So will that. Fashion okay. sense, uh, music sense. Pharrell never gets old. Nah. I'm trying to be Pharrell when I'm 100. Vegan. Yeah, I know. But you know, I'm veggie right now. I'm a pesca vegan. <laughs> You not a vegan. I'm a pesca vegan. I heard he that. Cheat, he cheats. I heard that. I'm a pesca he, vegan. He cheats. He eats fish and yes. he's a vegan. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's you no vegetarian. Dairy, no dairy. You vegetarian, nah, vegetarian bro. Vegetarians nah, eat dairy, right? No, no. I don't do. No, nah, but not but, all vegetarians eat dairy. But what I'm dairy. saying though, as far as like. When, Look, you get, when you get down to the specifics, oh, Omar's like, making stuff up. When you get down to the specifics, you know, now as, that a, I think as a vegetarian, you can have dairy products. Listen, hold on, right? hold on. Now that I think about it, you were on vacation eating mad shrimps. Hell yeah. Like, <laughs> yo. Yo. <laughs> hey, that vegan diet went out the window. <laughs> hey, like, but you know what? Check this out. Check this out. I was vegan for six weeks, right? <laughs> and one thing that I learned while being vegan, your diet... It's what's, what's most important about your diet is being aware, you know, of what you're consuming. Yeah. You know, and will I cut things out of my diet from here on out? Of course, you know, but some things like I think that I could have in moderation, you yeah. know, and I, I take very, very, very good care of my body, you know, and there's certain things that I just don't want to give up. Fish is the only thing. The salmon salmon's popping though, so I don't blame you. Yeah, but you know what? I don't even read, really you know eat a lot of salmon? salmon. I do. I do the salmon, or I do the tuna albacore. Those yeah. are my two. I rock with a uh, halibut, uh, snapper. As long as, you, as, long as you're not doing tilapia, we good. No, I don't do the tilapia. You know that that's not a real fish. But I stay away from. The, I try to stay away from the salmon though because like it doesn't make you think like why salmon is available everywhere. No, like literally you, everywhere you, you can know, get salmon. You know why it doesn't make me think of it because the salmon that I buy is wild caught. Right, right, Alaskan right. salmon. But, like, salmon, is you only going to have salmon when you buy it? 
<laughs> yeah, that's normally the only because I cook. Oh, okay. Okay. I cook. Look, Omar be trying to shade me I'm just on the saying. lowest of keys. Y'all can't see his I face, just... but he shaded me. There's what? some shade in here. Nah, listen, no shade. Listen, no okay. Shade. But my whole thing is like going off the same thing. So like when you talking about lettuce and whatnot, right? And we talking about non-GMO, um, no a pesticide lettuce. You only going to eat the lettuce you get or you going to eat the lettuce at the well, restaurant? First of, all, first of all, I don't even, I don't even buy in, but I, okay, I get what you're saying. But I don't buy into the non-GMO shit, like, the orga- like organic shit, man. You know why I buy into it? And this is just a Nigerian thing. The reason why I buy into it is because when I eat here, I eat my exact diet here, right? I go home. I eat the exact diet in Nigeria. I lose 10 pounds. What's the difference? Preservatives. Exactly. When That's I went to London, I went to London. I lo- Look, I was eating crazy in London. You know what I mean? Like, I was eating crazy in London. Yet I lost weight in London. How did I lose weight in London? Their version of the FDA doesn't let in half the crap we sell here. Yeah, which is part of the reason why when I went on vacation, you were just eating whatever. I was eating whatever I wanted. Yeah, because I, mean, I, I understand your, that. Your shrimps was popping, so. Yeah, it was popping. I was looking at your Insta story, you know. Good. I was feeling a certain kind of way. You may uh, bring me no shrimps back. It was good. Oh, yeah, yeah, by the way, I didn't mention, you know, I do be cooking. You do we cook it? I know. We gotta start you we gotta start you on a food channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta we got a Facebook live you cooking cooking me dinner. What's up? Thanks. Ain't no thing. Appreciate you. You know. I enjoy that. You see that invite I just got myself? Okay, thank you. That's a finesse. <laughs> That's how you finesse the situation right there. All right, anyway. Finesse queen. Anyway, man, I appreciate you for coming in the studio tonight. Yeah, no doubt. It's been a me. pleasure. A nice discussion. All right. Peace.